life here is not for the faint-hearted. It is poised on the brink, buffeted to extremes, blocked in a fitful struggle for survival. Life here against the Alps. Millions of years ago, the Earth's crust heaved and churned to unleash a sprawling geological wonder. Now the Alps belong to those creatures hardy and spirited enough to survive their unforgiving heights. They are nature's own mountaineers, each a living testament to adaptation, each evolution's answer to one of the Earth's most inhospitable realms. The Alps stretch for nearly 1,300 kilometers across seven countries in Central Europe. Their heights reach over 4,500 meters. This is a vertical world, molded by moving glaciers. Carved out of its rugged slopes is a mosaic of habitats. From summits that spirit into the clouds, to high meadows and rich alpine valleys. Here, isolation and climatic extremes have bred life in a myriad of forms. Weather rules the Alps, testing its creatures with conditions as dramatic as the scenery. Winter amid the high peaks is a punishing season. For many animals, this is a time of hardship. But one thrives in winter's fury. The lynx is the crown prince of the Alpine kingdom. Like many big cats, lynx are solitary, though females spend nearly a year raising their young. Her kittens, born in spring, are now about eight months old. Soon, they'll be ready to set off on their own across the mountain in search of prey, to prowl in solitude the territories they alone rule. These are powerful predators in the making, their bodies designed for chasing their quarry over short sprints. They have long legs, stout bodies, stubby tails and large fur padded feet that act like snowshoes. They owe their success as well to hunting skills and techniques passed from generation to generation. Since males play no role in raising the young, it's up to the female to ensure that her kittens learn well. They haunt the alpine forests where there's plenty of cover to hide in ambush. They often prey on chamois, a mountain goat, and roe deer. While their large prey can get bogged down in snow up to nine meters deep, the lynx slips across it like a shadow.
lynx weigh only about 23 kilograms, but they're able to bring down animals twice their size. They kill with a bite to the neck, which severs the spinal cord, or a choke hold. The cat hangs on tightly until its victim suffocates. In winter, meals are often rare and hard won, and the female is typically famished after the hunt. Only after she's sated does she allow her cubs to get their fill. The cold provides natural refrigeration to preserve the carcass, and a snow mound helps to hide it from scavengers. For mother and kittens, there'll be plenty to be had as leftovers tomorrow. It's rare to see a lynx together with her litter so late in winter, all the more so, for the lynx is itself a rare creature. The lynx is not the only hunter in these woodlands. Because they were seen as competition, the lynx were virtually wiped out earlier this century. It has taken a generation of work by biologists to reintroduce it to the wild. Now, as winter relinquishes its grip on the mountains, life amid the Alps braces for a transformation. Come March, the valleys may still be cloaked in snow, but spring is approaching. You can hear it carried in the breeze, in the call of the Capacale. In winter, the male's dense plumage keeps him warm, but now it serves another purpose, to lure the opposite sex. Their elaborate courtship displays are punctuated by the male bird's unlikely call, produced by inflating a special air sac. Their display calls are invariably accompanied by a flamboyant dance, performed to impress the females and attract them into the male's territory to mate. Each dawn is greeted with the haunting echoes of the capicale resounding through the alpine woods. Spring doesn't reach all the residents of the Alps at the same time. While its arrival is heralded in the valleys, the high peaks remain locked in winter's grip. But gradually, the warm air permeates the tapering slopes. The water unleashed is the lifeblood of the mountains, captured by the snow peaks above, then released to the valleys below. Europe's great rivers are born of the wellspring that is the mighty Alps. The chamois trace the opposite path struggling back up the slopes from the valleys. As the white carpet retreats, revealing new growth, they can return to their protected world above, where they feel most at home. Chamois take full advantage of the patchwork of habitats the mountains have to offer. They partake of the forests in winter 
and the high pastures in summer. Now they head straight for the Alps rarefied heights. Before giving birth, mothers travel far up the steep slopes, protected from predators by a landscape few creatures can navigate easily. This mother has recently given birth. Remarkably, her babies are up and running only 20 minutes after they're born. Young chamois are born in May and June a strategy which coincides with the new spring growth. Still, for the first few days of life, they're a bit shaky on their feet. They must swiftly master the species' characteristic sure-footedness if they hope to win a place amid the herd. At first, youngsters stay close to their mother for protection from predators and the treacherous terrain. As they manoeuvre over the craggy edges, their mother takes the outside position, just in case. The herd has spent the long winter with little to eat. The new season brings prospects of plenty. They've been living off their fat reserves and now the cycle of feasting begins again. They're not only eating for today, but storing energy for leaner times ahead. Even as they gain weight, they shed their heavy winter coats. Their every fibre is tuned to the seasonal quest, to eat. Chamois must tirelessly chew about 50 times for each mouthful. This breaks up the hard walls of plant cells, helping them to digest. Special microorganisms in their system help them extract nutrients from tough, protein-rich grasses. The chamois are nature's quintessential climbers. They are agile and fleet-footed, balancing aloft on the slightest of pedestals, without so much as missing a step. It's all in the feet. Their hooves have edges to help anchor them, and rubber-like soles which provide traction enough to grip the most dizzying foothold. Their stability is matched by their stamina. A strong heart and a bolstered supply of iron-rich blood ensures an adequate supply of oxygen in this thin mountain air. They are a singular marvel of the Alps, but in that they're not alone, for this is a world populated by small wonders. Every spring amid the high pastures, they surface. Alpine marmots are just emerging from their burrows where they've been hibernating all winter. They live in colonies which maintain vast underground systems of burrows and tunnels. In fact, the animals spend 80% of their lives underground, staying warm in winter and cool in summer. Still enduring the long, cold season huddled underground, is enough to coax the most hardened marmot to sample a little sunshine. (whistles) 
they've lost as much as a third of their body weight during hibernation. Now, time is short. A fat marmot is a healthy marmot, and the season has come to fatten up. A member of the colony stands guard, watching for any sign of predators. If it spots an intruder, it will sound the alarm. Marmot society is complex. Within the colony, individuals ceaselessly interact, reaffirming bonds, playing or greeting each other. When they first emerge from hibernation, Marmots are highly gregarious. This is a time to get reacquainted with other members of the colony. The youngest among them, born underground, are seeing the outside world for the first time and finding out they have an extended family. Play is not just for the younger members of Marmot society. A male enjoys a tussle with one of his offspring. Play fights are a precursor to more serious bouts. They serve as sparring matches for young males who, as adults, will soon engage in vicious territorial skirmishes. For now, they are mock battles, but the time will come when life or death struggles will decide who rules these slopes. Controlling territory, achieving dominance, is a sign of strength and an irresistible lure to marmot females. As summer approaches, the Alps are in their full glory. The mountains are reborn. By mid-May, the slopes have turned in their coat of white for one of green. The female lynx has parted ways with her two kittens. They've both gained their independence. But she is not alone. She mated at the end of winter and has already had a new litter. She's keeping the kittens well hidden in the hollow of a fallen tree. Today is one of their first forays into the strange new world they've inherited. For now, they are wholly dependent. It will be months before they can part company with their mother. Until then, her guard can never be down. Every sound and smell around her is charged with danger.
During the first five months of their lives, the kittens feast on her milk. By massaging with their paws, they help the nourishing liquid flow out of her milk ducts. At this tender age, the young are ever active, ever curious. Just about anything can be put to good use to hone their skills of attack. Their mother only leaves their side when hunger strikes, returning quickly to feed and protect them. Soon they will be able to join her on the hunt, but for now, they occupy their time in other ways. Anything that moves is alluring. Often the kittens simply attack each other. Young lynx are their own best teachers. An hour away is an eternity for a mother lynx. The hunt must be swift or the price of her absence may be high. A hare is easy prey and easy enough to carry home. After nursing her kittens for four months, she's now starting to wean them. The youngsters are learning what to do with their new diet. At first, the carcass is just another plaything. But eventually, they catch on. It's high time. Lessons on the snow peaks must be learnt swiftly as a passing summer. The marmots catch their last rays of sunshine before retreating back to their hideaways under the earth. The season has left them fattened and revived. By November, the slopes are covered with snow once again. Despite the isolation of the alpine environment, animals like the chamois and the lynx are threatened by hunting and loss of habitat. These animals display impressive adaptations to their extreme environment, but they are vulnerable to changes that might result from human exploitation. Only with caution and foresight will life against the Alps continue to flourish? And it's Mother Nature in distress and needing help closer to home for Friday night at 7.30 with Wildlife SOS. And coming next to Australia...